Every TV show has to end at some point, and Velocity's Overhaulin is no exception. However, unlike other series, Overhaulin has been rejuvenated several times since its first cancellation in 2008, and at this point, its audience is already used to the show's less than stable but successful revivals. So for a show with such a long history, it's normal for new viewers to wonder how the series was in its early years and what was the initial concept behind it. If you're one of those people, then keep watching as we tell you everything about Overhaulin and Chip Foose's beginnings, its former cast members, the cancellations, revivals, and the entire history of the show. Seeing how successful and renowned Overhaulin is for motorheads and fans of automotive-centered shows alike, it's surprising to know that the show almost didn't happen. It all goes back to the early 2000s when Chip Foose's work in his auto shop Foose Design attracted the attention of big names in the automotive industry, including Jesse James, the host of the then unpremiered car building series Monster Garage, who invited Chip to co-host as well as be the show's main designer. Although Chip rejected his offer, Discovery brought out another show concept which didn't quite fit his expectations either. The producers didn't give up though. And after introducing several other proposals, Chip ultimately accepted hosting a show which truly represented his passion for car building. That's how he came up with the concept for Overhaulin, as a means to help people who dreamed of having an incredible car but couldn't afford it. Let's take the car, let's build it, and give it to them as a gift. Now we've got something with great value, and it's a feel-good show, he told Petrolicious.com in 2016. Then the producer Bud Brutzman proposed inserting the pranking and stealing factors to Chip's concept eventually agreeing to finish each rebuild in a week. That's how Overhaulin was created. Although the focus of Overhaulin is to take cars from normal looking to amazing, the whole fake stealing factor is admittedly one of the most entertaining parts of the show. What did the authorities have to say? Even so, it's normal to wonder how Overhaulin got away with stealing plotline legally, but the answer is less surprising than expected. According to Chip Foose, in the early stages of the show, the stolen car owners usually reported their issue to the local police and it took a lot of talking from the show's side to get away with it. However, as overhauling grew and gained more popularity, these problems became easier to avoid. We've made friends with most of the local authorities, and the various police departments work with us and have a lot of fun with the show, he told JLFullThrottle.com. Though the most skeptical viewers argue that the stealing scenes might be staged, Chip's words don't sound that improbable, considering how popular overhauling was at some point. While Chip Foos and his overhauling team were good at taking a car apart, rebuilding it always from scratch, and ultimately transforming it into a jaw-dropping machine in only a week. It required a lot of planning and coordinated efforts. So how did the process go? According to a report by the online magazine Mustang and Fords, the process every car in overhauling went through was divided into seven days. Day one consisted in the car's deconstruction, but not before several takes of it were taken, not only for design reference, but to compare the final design to the original state of the car, always taking into consideration the owner's personal taste. Afterwards, the automobile is set apart, and the main repairs and modifications are undertaken, only the car's body being sent to a second-party shop on the second day to be cleaned and prepared for paint. The third day is for mechanical work, followed by the installation of equipment and alarms on the fourth day. On the fifth day, the body comes back, painted, and ready to be put together with the rest of the car, extending to the sixth day when the drivetrain installation happens. The seventh day is to shape the car's interiors and wiring, a process which starts early in the week when its parts are taken care of by a third-party expert. The delivery day is the last, when everything should be ready to run. As Chip Fu said in an interview with Petrolicious.com, the seven-day window to finish every car was as real as overhaul and made it out to be. However, owners didn't actually take their car home on the delivery day, despite what the show made us believe. The reason behind that is an understandable one. As Chip affirmed, this strict schedule for every project also meant that the team members were overworked and sleep-deprived in the final, possibly compromising the safety of the car. That also answers the question of why Chip usually drove the cars instead of someone else or the owner. If something was going to go wrong, I wanted to be the one that would figure out, okay, how am I going to stop this? After cameras stopped worrying, Chip and his more relaxed and non-stressed team thoroughly checked cars for any mechanical or fabrication issues in it. That safety test took from weeks to months to complete though, as according to Chip, that period is what it takes to build a car in real life. As with any TV show from a renowned network such as Discovery, there's a lot of money involved. It's no different for Overhaulin, of which costs per episode were astronomical. It turns out that Overhaulin was truly loyal to its concept of building cars for those who couldn't pay for it. That means that on average, each project cost Discovery $120,000 in the first season. While the network usually made much more than that from advertising alone, it was hardly a good deal for Chip Foose, 
as he was paid $20,000 per episode of the first season, though that looks like a good deal for almost everyone. The fact that he donated all the equipment and materials to make every project possible meant that he wasn't profiting from the whole concept, and his salary was almost incidental. When he asked why he accepted to work under such conditions, Chip said, I didn't want to fail on TV. Everything that I had was given to the show to make it work. On top of the lack of money, working eight days a week with almost no sleep was so physically draining that if it wasn't for the fact that he got his salary raised to $70,000 per episode, he wouldn't have accepted the filming of another season. Given how popular Overhaul was since its inception in 2004, its cancellation was surprising for everyone. Nonetheless, seeing how expensive the show was to produce, it's less surprising to figure out that money played a big role in it. As stated by Chip Foose, the 2007 economic crisis caused the show to lose its biggest advertisers, including banks and those affiliated with the automotive industry, eventually leading to the start of Overhaul's official hiatus in January 2008. Though for everyone, it was a full-fledged cancellation. Though TV shows aren't normally picked up again after being left in such an uncertain status, the unexpected happened. When in early 2012, Discovery invited Chip to resume the show. However, this time he had certain conditions the network simply had to accept. I said, I'll go, but I'm getting older and I need some sleep. I don't want to do the cars in eight days. And that's how Overhaul and 2012's revival had longer and more detailed filming times. In 2015, Overhaul was cancelled for real, as the network wanted to produce cheaper shows through third-party auto shops. It's an understatement to say that Chip Foose is a car expert. In fact, it's more accurate to say that cars and mechanics are just part of who he is. As early as 12 years old, Chip was evidently fascinated by everything automotive, something easily noticed by and unsurprising to his father, the car builder Sam Foose. That led to Chip's first driving experience, which ended up with him crashing his father's pickup into a parked Rolls Royce. While the experience didn't go as planned, it didn't deter Chip's love for cars. Working in his father's shop in Santa Barbara truly set his path in the right direction by allowing him to be close to the whole automobile customization process, in addition to awakening something else in him. When I think back, I think that's when I really knew that design was something that I was passionate about. Chip enrolled into the Art Center for College of Design, but dropped out when it became impossible to afford it. He then went back home to work with his father, while also opening his own shop and collaborating with several auto shops in California. Nonetheless, there was still a long way to go for Chip. Becoming successful in a highly competitive industry, such as the automotive one, is clearly difficult, but it wasn't an issue for the vastly talented Chip Foose. After he left college, Chip collaborated with the California-based design firm Sternberg Planet to create helmet cars for the National Football League. Those early years of Chip's career were split between working with his father on independent projects, illustrating movie cars, and even designing baseball team's cars, before actually accepting Sternberger's job offer in the mid-1980s. A couple of years later, he went back to the art center, where his graduation project was building a model for Chrysler Corporation, which attracted the attention of Boyd Coddington, for whom Chip worked for free for a couple of years while also maintaining his old job. I did that for two and a half years and never gave Boyd a bill, he told Petrolicious.com. When 1992 came around, Chip had offers from Ford and Volkswagen, but decided against those in favor of designing for Coddington, who not only offered him a real job with better salary than the others, but also because it allowed Chip to directly work for the hot rod industry. While some people set their professional path based on how financially profitable it is, for Chip Foose, it was more than that. Entering the hot rod industry fulfilled his desire to work on projects truly appreciated by owners, saying, you're building somebody's dream car. Then when they get it, they're going to enjoy it for years and years. Chip worked for Boyd Coddington for five years before the company filed for bankruptcy in 1998. Needless to say, Chip left Boyd but the situation wasn't the best then. I had $700 in the bank and found out my wife was pregnant, left with no job and no money. Chip was then contacted by the car equipment manufacturer Precision Power Incorporated to design their upcoming 1999 product line. Chip convinced them to hire him with a 3% royalty contract and an onward payment of $10,000 with which he established Foose Design and the rest is history. Entering the entertainment world is the dream of many people and a logical step forward for someone as renowned as Chip Foose was in the early 2000s. That's why it's surprising that he rejected his first offers to appear on TV when Monster Garage's Jesse James invited him to be his co-host in 2003. Nonetheless, Chip had good reasons to say no to James. As he admitted, he didn't see the value of building a car no one would ever use, something he maintained when more proposals for TV shows came around in the next year. I'm going, I'm trying to build the most beautiful pieces of rolling art that I can build and you want to put me on television building these monsters. 
He told Petrolicious.com, even if turning down such an offer would be unthinkable for many, Chip considered that as the best no of his career, as it eventually landed him over Holland. For me, seeing the look on the owner's face is the most rewarding part of the show. He said to Roadfly Magazine, was the future for overhauling? The last time we saw the series on our screens was in 2020, when its 10th season aired on the Mototrend app streaming service, though a renewal hasn't been announced since then. This doesn't come as a surprise, considering how many times Overhaul has been on hiatus, only to be revived again after a couple of years. Nowadays, Chip Foose's most loyal fans could get to know about his most recent projects thanks to the YouTube channel Foose Design, and though that's not the same as watching Overhaul, it's probably enough for the fans in the meantime. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.